It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my mother, not my father, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not my mother, not my father, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. 
It's me, it's me, it's me, me oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, me oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, me oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, me oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my mother, not my father, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer.
Good morning and welcome to Worship at Leap of Faith Church. I'm Virgie Holbrook, I'm the pastor of the church and I'm glad that you're here with us this morning. Leap of Faith is located in Sherman, Texas, but we know we have worshipers across the United States and all of you, we're glad that you're here this morning. Thank you for coming. If you would please check in, one of the best parts of my week is seeing your name appear in the comments. If you want to worship anonymously, you know that's perfectly okay, but it sure is fun to see you, uh, to you, see you sign in with your name. And if you um, are worshiping with someone and could let me know who you're worshiping with, husband, wife, children, if you have a friend with you this morning, if you would say Mary and Judy are worshiping together today or Maggie and Bill, Billy are worshiping together today, um, it's helpful to know who all is who all is behind uh, who, all, who all is behind the screen or on the other side of the screen. I appreciate your help with that. We have a few announcements this morning. Our board of directors met last Sunday, June seventh, in an online meeting, a Zoom meeting, and approved protocols for the eventual reopening of our building. Uh, these are all kinds of all kinds of plans for making sure the building is clean and sanitized properly that the sanctuary is set up to ensure your safety, uh, protocol for taking care of the children of the church, uh, places to enter, places to exit, how the parking will be set up. I appreciate the board for, for wrestling with this. It is probably the most tedious work that any of our board members will ever have to do, uh, probably the, the tedious work for the church they will ever have to do. And I appreciate each member of the board of directors for being faithful to do this important work. It is for the purpose of keeping us all safe when the doors to the sanctuary reopen again on Sunday morning to welcome all of you all in. If you have questions about those protocols, questions about the plans, you know you're welcome to call me. It's 903. 821-4505, I'd be happy to hear from you. And again, if you have ideas, suggestions, or questions about what we're planning, please don't hesitate to pick up the phone and call. Uh, you can text me if that works better. Of course, email is fine to lofchurch at hotmail.com. We are planning an online Bible study of Daniel. I'll be preaching for, from Daniel in July. We found a couple of books that you might be interested in reading along with me. And if you would be interested in participating, this will be an online study. Again, give me a call. It's 903-821-4505. Or you can text me this morning and say, I'm in. Tell me more about the Bible study. 903-821-4505. Bedtime Bible School started last Sunday evening, June 7th, with 37 children and a bunch. Oh, look who's here. It's our frog again. F-R-O-G, you remember, fully rely on God. He's kind of our Bedtime Bible School mascot. Um, we will see more of him on Saturday morning at 9 o'clock on our Facebook page, the Leap of Faith Facebook page. And, of course, he'll be with us through Bedtime Bible School as well. Frog, can you give him a wave? And can you give them a wave? Excellent. Well, you'll be hearing more about Bedtime Bible School, the, the uh, family, family oriented, home based Bible school that Leap of Faith is offering this summer. Bye, Frog. We're glad you were here this morning. Oh, and if you would like to serve as a prayer partner for Bedtime Bible School, we have a great group signed up to pray for the children who are uh, participating in Bible school. But if you'd like to serve as a prayer partner, please let me know. So that takes care of that. Let's get to the real reason that we're here this morning to worship. Remember this, my friends, you are loved and you are wanted at Leap of Faith Church. You are loved and you are wanted by our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherever you are this morning, wherever you are this morning, you are a part of this church and we're so glad to have you as a part of this church. This is, this is the church gathered right here right now and you and i we are all all members of it will you hear the good news this morning this is inspired by eugene peterson in the message it's from psalm 116. Um, that paraphrase of the bible many have found to be helpful devotional reading i know that i do and this is how peterson has psalm 116. even when we don't know which way to turn God will show us the way. Even when everything is going wrong, God will make it right. When we stumble, when we fall, God will pick us up. 
God showers us with blessings. All we have to do is ask. God stands ready to help. So relax. So relax and rest and worship. I invite you to worship as the Leap of Faith band together with Jessica Brown, our good friend Jessica Brown, leads us in worship singing, A Change Is Gonna Come. Sit back and listen and worship.
Leap of Faith, of course, is an independent church not affiliated with any denomination. People often ask us what we believe. We embrace the Apostles' Creed, that historic confession of the Christian faith. This would be a good day to say it out loud with me, or if you'd rather just listen, you're welcome to do that as well. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let's continue to worship with a prayer of confession, a prayer that allows us to come before God with easy hearts, with open and pure hearts. Think for a minute about some of those things that have been a problem in your relationship with God this week, anything that might have stood between you, anything that is standing between you and God, anything that makes it hard for you to come before God and ask for what you need. I'll be thinking for myself. I invite you to be thinking for yourself of some of those things. Let's name them. Let's be clear about them. And now let's pray. God, there are just those times when we feel like giving up. We are tired. We are weak. We are worn. We wonder, God, where it is you're leading us. We wonder whether you're leading us at all. Forgive us, God, when we feel like that and help us trust you even when we aren't sure where it is you're taking us. Hear us, God, as we pray together, and hear each one of us as we silently confess to you some of those things that are on our hearts, on our minds, things we need to ask your forgiveness for. Now will you hear this good news? In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am forgiven. Amen. We have joys and concerns to pray for today. I have some of them written down on paper here, and some of them are here on my laptop. Let me see if I can pull those up. Yes. I ask your prayers as I do each Sunday for those who are leading our world, those who are leading our country, those who are leading our community, and those who are leading our church. This is a hard time to be a leader. I ask you, I ask you to pray for God's guidance for all of those who have stepped into roles of leadership or been elected to roles of leadership. Will you pray as well for all those who are ill, injured, or suffering in any way? We continue to pray for Ralph's sister-in-law, Anne, for Arnold and his family, Sean and his family, both these men um, are dealing with cancer. And please pray for Ralph and Pat, who are in fragile health. Please pray for Jessica Brown. She has um, gone through the deaths of both her grandmother and her grandfather in recent weeks. And I ask your prayers for John Vest and the death of his father and stepmother, Please pray for, for these friends of Leap of Faith Church and their families. I ask your prayers for all those who are traveling, those here at Leap of Faith who serve in the military of our country, Hunter, Tyler, Jessica. Please pray for everyone who has a joy of any kind, those who are celebrating engagements, those who are celebrating wedding anniversaries, those who are celebrating new jobs. Pray as well, if you would, for those who celebrate birthdays this week on June 15th. It's Jan Oliver. On the 16th, we have two birthdays, Michelle Owens and Paris Williams. We owe you all a birthday button. Uh, please be sure of our prayers, uh, prayers for the, the best in the year ahead. I ask your prayers for all those who are expecting children, Ryan and Michelle, Rachel and Courtney, uh, Rachel and Corey. Please pray for health care workers and all those who are in essential jobs. I ask your prayers for all who are serving here at Leap of Faith, our board of directors who are making decisions about opening our sanctuary for worship, 
This is not an easy decision, and they are making it with you in mind, with your safety and well-being in mind. Please pray for Steve and for Phil. They put in the electric line for our new sign this week. Uh, Steve also removed branches from that tree that fell in our backyard. Mary Ann is making masks for us to wear when we come back to this building. Uh, Brad and Summer, of course, are, are faithful to produce our worship service. I ask your prayers, too, for the Leap of Faith Band, joined today by Jessica Brown. These people work harder than you can possibly imagine to bring us music for worship. And I ask your prayers for all of the 37 who are involved in Bedside Bible School. They're reading through the whole Bible in eight weeks' time. And I'm grateful for those who are supporting them by serving as prayer partners. Norma, Kay, Pam, two Pams, Emma, Maggie, Summer, Dana, Susan, Marilyn, Brenda, Kelly, Wes, Paul, and Cindy. We are grateful to you for your ministry to the children who are involved in bedtime Bible school. We, we, we thank you that you're, that you're praying for these children and for their families. If you have another joy, another concern to share, if you would put it in the comments. I became aware this week that sometimes those slip by us on Sunday morning, and I try to write them down as soon as I see them. But if you have a pressing concern that you want to be sure is being prayed over, please text me, 903-821-4505, or email me, lofchurch at hotmail.com to get your concern or your joy on our prayer list. We want to support you with our prayers and we'll do that faithfully if you will let us know what that joy, what that concern is. And now let's pray. God, we're praying for your people this morning. We pray for those who are facing big newsworthy concerns of life and death. We pray for those whose lives are threatened by pandemic illness or by systemic endemic oppression. God, help them and God, help us. We pray this morning, God, for those who are facing more private and personal concerns of life and death, relationships that are troubled, illnesses that aren't newsworthy but concerning nonetheless, grief that just won't let up. God, help those who have concerns like these, and God, help us. We pray, God, for those who have concerns that aren't life and death at all, concerns about the annoyances and worries of life that most all of us face at one time or another, a child making bad decisions, a car that's on its last leg, a job that is mind-numbing. God, help those who have concerns like these, and God, help us too. God, help with each concern of each person now praying. Even when we don't know the kind of help that each one needs, you do, God. You know. So God, help them, and God, help us. And God, please do Please help us not lose sight of the joys, the pleasures, the blessings of this life, even when we're sad and sorry, beat down, even when we feel like that, God, open our eyes and our hearts to, to, to what is good. Keep us open to and appreciative of what is just purely good in the world and good in our lives. Hear our prayer, God. Hear our prayers. Those we play, pray publicly and write out loud and those we don't share with a single soul except only just you. Hear us as we pray these prayers, God, and hear us we pray together in Jesus' name as Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I got a call from a church member this week, and this church member said to me, Virgie, you don't ask for money enough. I dare say that there are those out here this out, out there this morning who would disagree with this. Um, I thank you for the, for, the, for the money that you are giving, uh, for all those who are supporting the ministry of this church, the ongoing ministry of this church in this difficult time. I am more grateful than I can tell you for your gifts. Um, thank you. 
thank you for your generous hearts and thank you for your love of God and thank you for this love of uh, for your love of this church and thank you for your love of God's people that prompts your generosity. If you wish to support the ministry of this church with a financial offering, there are ways to do that. We have the new text to give offering. Um, if you receive the newsletter, there are slides that show you pictures that show you exactly how to do that. Or you can call this number, text this number, 903-225-8775. Seven, seven, four, and just follow the instruct instructions to text to give. You can also give through PayPal on our newsletter, on our website, or you can write a check and drop it in the mail to LOFC 5615 North Farm to Market 1417 Sherman, Texas 75092. All those numbers there are in our newsletter. And if you aren't receiving our newsletter and would like to receive it, please let me know. Again, just text to 903 8214505 and say send me the newsletter or you can request it on our website mylofc.org we will get it to you and that's a good way to keep up with what's going on uh, the long and the short of it is though thank you for all your giving all you have given to leap of faith church and now let's pray god thank you for the gifts that leap of faith church has received from these generous givers Thank you for the gifts and thank you for the givers. Bless their compassion, bless their generosity, bless their faithfulness. Hear us as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Our Bible lesson today, once again in Matthew, I mentioned that we're going to be moving to Daniel in July, but we have a little bit more, uh, a little bit more in Matthew before we make that change where we are reading today from the fourth chapter of Matthew, right near the beginning, verses 18 through 22. If you'd like to follow along in your own Bible, please do that. Or if you'd rather just listen, that's fine too. Here's how the story goes. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake. They were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, Jesus saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee pre preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately, immediately they left their boat and their father, and they followed Jesus. I ask God to bless this reading of God's Holy Word. Our air conditioner is kind of blowy in here, and these papers, they can, they can sure get in disarray in a hurry. So thank you with your patience while I juggle them. I have a friend, and maybe you have friends too, who've said something like this. I have a friend who said recently, it's a miracle I finally found bleach wipes at Walmart. I'm as big a fan of bleach wipes as anyone, and I know that they can be hard to find in any store, but strictly speaking, while finding bleach wipes in any store, it's certainly lucky, but it's not exactly a miracle. Finding bleach wipes is certainly lucky, but we can explain how finding bleach wipes would happen. Bleach wipes get produced in some factory somewhere. They get put on a truck, sent to the store, and a purchaser by coincidence or wise planning shows up just in time to buy the bleach wipes. A miracle, on the other hand, a real miracle, a miracle is harder to explain than that. A miracle is an event that's impossible to explain except for the intervention of God. There's this website, it's called GodUpdates.com, and if you go to that website, miracle after miracle is reported there. As you know, I'm pretty pragmatic, and most of what appears on this website as miraculous, I might be more inclined to call lucky. On the other hand, a wife waking up to find her husband dead and then realizing an hour and a half later that his heart started beating again, that might qualify as a miracle, divine intervention rather than plain good luck. Divine intervention might also explain the skydiver who survived a 200-foot fall after a mid-air collision with another skydiver. But it's not only divine intervention that, biblically speaking, 
causes a miracle. Biblically speaking, a miracle is something that teaches us something more about Jesus, about who he is and about what he teaches. And today, our Bible story, today our Bible story is about a sure enough miracle, something that couldn't happen, shouldn't happen, wouldn't happen, except that God leads it to happen in order that we, you and I, might learn something more about Jesus. You've heard the story before. I am practically positive. You know how that story goes, even if I hadn't just read it. The title that the story is often given is The Call of the First Disciples, The Call of Jesus's First Disciples. You know how the story goes. Jesus is out walking, and he sees these two brothers fishing. And Jesus says to them, come follow me, and I'll make you fish for people. And these brothers drop everything that they're doing, and they do. They follow Jesus, and then it happens again. Jesus sees two more brothers. He calls them, and they follow him too. Think about it. Jesus hasn't been in this town very long, having just moved from Nazareth to Capernaum. Simon and Andrew, James and John, it's not like they've had a long acquaintance with Jesus, years and years of developing friendship and trust. Jesus doesn't know them either. What Jesus does know is that it's time to start the work he's come to earth to do. What Jesus knows is that that work involves people. And here, right in front of Jesus as he walks along the shore of that lake, here are people, four people. Evidently, Jesus looks at them and feels like they do, like these four people were as good as any to start his work with. And so Jesus says to these four people, first two and then the other two, he says to these four people, follow me, I have work for you to do. And here's where the miracle happens. These four busy fishermen, not recreational fishermen, but livelihood fishermen, they drop what they're doing. They turn their backs on their work without evidently a thought. At once, immediately, they turn their backs on what they were doing, and they turn to follow Jesus, a man they don't even know. Now, remember, Jesus hasn't made them any promises. Jesus hasn't said to them, Believe in me and I will be your personal savior. Jesus hasn't said to them, I'm God, you know. He just says, follow me. I have work for you to do. And the miracle is that the four busy fishermen do it. They hear him and they do it. They follow Jesus without any promises being made, without any explanation being given. They put down what they're doing and they follow Jesus because he says he has work for them to do. They follow him because he says the word. They follow him because he calls them. And that's a miracle. And it shows us what kind of guy Jesus is. Not just charismatic, not just compelling. It shows us who Jesus is. He's God. Someone who is hard to ignore when he speaks to us. We might turn our backs on him, of course. We have free will. We can do that. We can turn our backs on him. We might take issue with him. Again, it's that free will thing. But when God speaks, when God calls, the power and the promise of God's word alone, well, it grabs hold of us one way or another. And that's the miracle. That's the miracle. The lengths that God will go to to speak to us, to you, and to me. Still, now, today, even now, in the best days of our lives and in the worst days of our lives, and in the most ordinary of ordinary days, God speaks to us. God speaks to you. God speaks to me. God speaks to us through Jesus, and the message is this. Follow me. There are no threats. There are no promises. There are no explanations. There is just follow me. I don't know about you, but very often these days I have a hard time knowing the right thing to do. What I want to do seems to run counter to what I ought to do. There was a letter to advice columnist Carolyn Hacks this past Wednesday, a letter from a woman who months ago agreed to serve as a bridesmaid for her friend and her friend's wedding, 
months ago before there was a pandemic, but then there was a pandemic and this perspective bridesmaid living in a virus hotspot with two aging parents wanting with all her heart to keep her promise to the prospective bride, her close friend, living in another virus state, another virus hotspot, wanting this bridesmaid did to go have a good time at her dear friend's wedding. The bridesmaid didn't know what to do. She didn't know whether to travel to be in the wedding or to stay home and protect not only her parents, but also the bride. The bridesmaid contacted this advice columnist to try to figure out what to do because she said she didn't know what to do. She didn't know the right decision to make. And the advice columnist advised that bridesmaid that she did in fact know the right decision to make. The right decision was the painful and unpopular decision not to travel to serve as a bridesmaid in that wedding, not to do it because protecting the health of everyone involved, that was more important. It wasn't what she wanted to do, but it was what was called for. I don't know about you, but these days making the right decision often means making the hard, unpopular, painful decision. Fortunately, God is still speaking to us. Fortunately, God still speaks to you and to me. Fortunately, he still speaks to us through Jesus, still. And that is a miracle. Still, today, even now, even in the best days of our lives, even in the worst days of our lives, even in the most ordinary of ordinary days, God speaks to us, to you, to me. God speaks to us through Jesus. And the message from Jesus to us, it's this. Follow me. Follow me and I will show you how to take care of my people. Have you had any hard decisions to make lately? Who hasn't? Do you have any hard decisions waiting still to be made? Who doesn't? Well, there's our answer. There's our answer right here in this Bible story. Follow me, Jesus says, and I'll show you how to take care of my people. And there is our answer right there, right there. And it's a miracle. Still, today, all these years later, God still speaks to us. God still speaks to God's people, to you, to me. God is speaking still. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for coming to worship at Leap of Faith Church. This is not how we had planned to worship, is it, when we built this new building and moved into it this past fall. Um, but worshiping together online, it is not without its blessings. And I'm thankful that you're here so that we can worship together. Again, if you want to worship anonymously, please feel, feel perfectly free to do that. But, but if you would put your name in the comments together with the names of those you're worshiping with, it's nice to see who all is, has gathered for worship on Sunday morning. I remind you of our website, mylofc.org. If you've missed anything, a phone number, an address, a website, anything that you'd like to know, you can just go to mylofc.org and it'll be right there. Um, and if you're ready to give your life to Jesus, the Jesus who, who continues to call us and lead us, if you, if you would like to give your life to Jesus as a member of Leap of Faith Church, please let me know, and we'll work out a way to receive you as a member of this church, whether it's online or whether it's more back in this building, uh, opened up to worship again, closer together. Now as we close, let's pray. God, we will follow where Jesus leads. We will go where he asks us to go. God, we will do what Jesus asks us to do. When it's easy, God, and when it's hard, we will walk on together. We'll move forward, God, praying always in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope to see you back here next Sunday to celebrate Father's Day together. 
I hope to see you back here next Sunday, but first I hope you'll stick around and enjoy music from the Leap of Faith Band. And again, if you are interested in a Bible study for adults, let me know. I'd be glad to hear from you. Have a good week. Thank you. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me. Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel? Cross 
Turning back, turning back. 